the lecture four, which is on transmission media. So basically, transmission media is the communication channel or through which your data or your voice gets passed from the sender to the receiver. And uh, there are various types of transmission channels that are available with various advantages or disadvantages and various limitations. Right? So the general guide is that there are two types. One is the wire, the other one is the wire less. Eh? Or in other words, some people say guided or unguided. Okay? So we are going to look at that uh, in this uh, topic. So transmission medium, uh, some people say that the transmission medium or the transmission channel works at the layer zero of the OSI model. Okay? And, but then some people say it works at the layer one, right? Because of course the transmission medium is referred to as the physical medium, right? If it is wired, then we will assume that it is physical, right? Eh? So if it is physical, then of course, they work at the layer one of the OSI model. Right? But then some people think that because it is not part of the computer system, it is just right away from the computer system. And if you look at the diagram itself, right, they say physical layer, physical layer, but then the communication channel is just below that. Right? So they refer it as the layer zero, uh, uh, layer zero, uh, or rather working on layer zero okay but uh, in in the most cases right uh, they say that it works at the layer one of the outside model right so it says a transmission medium defined as anything that carry information between a source to destination and it is located below the physical layer and are directly controlled by the physical layer The classes of transmission media, right? This has been obtained from the textbook that uh, is recommended for this class. Right? So we have transmission media guided, that is wired and unguided, that's wireless. Right? So under the guided, we have the twisted pair, the coaxial, and the fiber optic. Right? And under the unguided, we have the radio wave, microwave, and infrared. So basically, the rest of the uh, slides are going to talk about uh, these. Guided media says, uh, which are those that provide a conduit from one device to another, include twisted pair, coaxial cable, and fiber optic. Twisted pair cables and, and coaxial cable is used metallic, that is COPA conductors that transport signals in the form of electric current. Fiber optic, however, transport signals in the form of light. Uh, I will also take or uh, make reference to the textbook that we have there. Another textbook in regards to the cables. Okay. Now, while we are talking about the twisted pair, okay, the twisted pair cable is when you see the wires are being twisted, right? like the sine wave. Right? So, in a COPA, like for example, if we are talking about a twisted pair, okay, under the twisted pair, you have got two categories the unsuited twisted pair and the shielded twisted pair. So, in any of those pairs, okay, each of them contain four pairs of wires, that is, eight wires, okay? four pairs, eight wires. So, the two, okay. That means four pairs, that means each two is uh, twisted like this. Now, the reason for twisting is, they say, okay, um, is reduces crosstalk. 
if you can recall the other day did i talk about cross talk the other day yes yeah, cross talk the uh, the signal from one cable induces the other cable right that's cross talk so the twisting uh, reduces cross talk size and the more twisting the better it is right but remember the more twist you are going to do okay the length of cable of course will increase eh? because if you are going to do more twist then of course the length of the cable is going to be longer if you do compared to less twist okay so again then there is a, a limitation that twisted pair cabling can only carry data right up to 100 meters okay. if you do more more twisting then uh, the length of the cable will increase and then the uh, coverage will be less so again there is like certain amount of twisting a moderate amount of twisting done eh? and uh, so there is each each cable has got a insulator right a, a plastic cover right and then inside that is the copper now uh, we say the conductor right so this is one of the wire used uh, to carry signal and the other as a ground Okay, so one is used for any signal, the other one provides the grounding. The receiver uses the difference between the two. And if the uh, two wires are parallel, the effect of interference, noise, and crosstalk is B. So if the wires are not, not twisted straight, then of course there is um, uh, more noise and more. Okay. Twisting the pair of wire balance the effect of unwanted signal and reduce it. Okay. So unwanted signal like cross talk and noise. Okay. Number of twists per length affects the quality of the cable. So some uh, well there are already standards made, right? The CIA has CIA. Has created the standard or has created the uh, you can say the documentation eh, or the specification how how many twists there should be in a particular cable. So if any manufacturer is manufacturing the twisted pair, then they have to know they have to follow that EIA EIA standard. Okay, all the cables that you find here, the, these blue network cables that you see. It always says there TIA says TIA. That means they are following that particular step. So they know that they have to use that particular uh, that many twist per meter or per feet. Right? All right, look at uh, this here. Twisted pair copper wiring. Right. In case if the um, the wires are parallel, for example. Right? So there is a source of radiation. And uh, you look at the first one, if there is a radiation of positive five in each, and the other cable has got a radiation of positive three, then in this case, the difference is so 20, you add all that, right? Five plus five and then six 20, and then here you get 12. Right? So 20 minus 12 gives you a difference of 8. So it says each of the wires on the top line, half of the time, it means uh, each wire absorbs the same amount of radiation. So the radius, why it's showing you this thing here? Because if you look at this sentence here, the receiver uses the difference between the two. Okay? This sentence basically is actually explained here now if you look at the uh, second example where there is twisting okay now if you look at the twisting in this case or rather the values okay so here there is radiation which is five but then the same cable down here gets a radiation of three so that's five plus three eight then here radiation of five again this 13 and then radiation again here plus 3 which is 16 right and the same goes here for the blue one 
थ्री प्लस फाइव एट ओके एंड प्लस थ्री इलेवन प्लस फाइव सिक्सटीन सो द डिफरेंस यर इज जीरो सो इन इन अ वे दिस ग्राउंडिंग केबल लाइक वन ऑफ देम विच इज द ग्राउंडिंग केबल राइट विच इज यूज एज अ ग्राउंडिंग रिड्यूजेज द amount of noise or radiation or anything that kind of affects the cable okay. so as i see here the current is balanced in a twisted right environment and emr that is electromagnetic radiation impact is reduced okay. reduced very close to zero or in case in some cases we can also get zero So this is what uh, why the uh, twisted is needed, right? A bit more about twisting here. Okay, we have looked at this. Uh, Okay, uh, talking about uh, twisted pair, unshielded twisted pair here, right? Next topic. Okay, unshielded versus shielded. So the unshielded twisted pair, in short, we say UTP, right? And uh, you will see that there is a plastic cover, and then uh, the wires being twisted like that, and the one with the shielded twisted pair okay this is the ibm standard and uh, they have got a metal shield and then the plastic cover right so the metal shield here says in stp improves the quality of cable by preventing the penetration of noise or crust stop it is bulkier and more expensive and it says twist, twisted pair cables are used in telephone lines to provide voice and data channels okay uh the unshielded twisted pairs are used in network environments that you see in today's networks okay right together with that so unshielded twisted pair consists of one more one or more insulated wires this says insulated wire pairs encased in a plastic sheet and utp does not contain additional shielding okay so utp the unshielded uh, twisted pair has no shielding and uh, utp is less expensive usually uh, the network or people who do networking or if you have to do networking in a large building or room you do not buy individual lens of the cable you go and buy the whole box right these whole boxes are usually sold in uh, like for example in pg we can what well okay or pfl or uh, the major even These these cables are actually manufactured in Fiji. Dominion cables, they manufacture this way. Right? So it comes in a length of 200 meters or 300 meters in a box. Okay. So as a network technician, for example, if you have to run a cable in this building, you will just go and grab one box, and then you will go and get the connectors and then measure the lengths and cut it at different sizes and then connect, make the patch cables. Do the, uh, the punch down at the uh, bench right now, right? and all that. So that all includes in uh, as part of a network technician and a network network admin's job, right? Right. Uh, given an example here, right? the first one example is the pvc grade cat 5e cable here the second or the third one here is the plenum grade okay the plenum grade is uh, actually used okay is flame resistant while the pvc cable coating is toxic when bent okay 
So if you are, uh, it is normally said that if you are uh, laying tables in ceilings, especially, okay, then use plenum grid. So that in case if there is uh, fire or something, those tables do not produce uh, toxic gas. Okay? Toxic gas, of course, is uh, harmful for the environment. Okay? Um, Cat six cable, right? So you can see there is a there is an example of a Cat six here. Um, it says plastic core in Cat six cable. Now sometimes you will find that there is a little uh, like a divider kind of thing inside a cable, right? Uh, that is just to strengthen the the cable, right? Not to be like like a plus. Kind of. Two or three dimensional way. Right? So two pairs in each section, eh? you can assume that. Or rather one pair in each section. So that way it's like kind of strengthens the cable and also uh, it can reduce the cross stock because there is a divider in the middle, right? So CAT6 has got that. Not all cables, some cables may have, some may not, right? And uh, These are the plenum grade cable, CAT5. CAT5 plenum grade cable, usually we'll have one string, okay? Together with the cables inside that, there's one string in here. So that makes it uh, plenum. Looking at the unshielded twisted pair categories, the COPA cable and their relevant bandwidth and the maximum length and where it is used. Eh? Now you will notice that CAT1 to CAT4, right? Uh, were used. So CAT1 is the old telephone lines, CAT2 token ring, CAT3 token ring, and CAT based Ethernet. Cat4 uh, token ring networks, then Cat5, which is up to 100 Mbps. Remember, uh, it will always say up to 100, not uh, at least 100, eh? up to 100. That means max is 100, less than that. Eh? So, twisted pair goes in uh, Ethernet and fast Ethernet and token ring networks. Cat5e, up to 1 gigabits per second. And the maximum length that it can enjoy is 100 meters. And it's applicable to Ethernet, fast Ethernet, and gigabit Ethernet. Okay. And CAT6, CAT6 a and then uh, CAT7. Eh? Now, remember for CAT6 and 6 a uh, there is a restriction on the uh, 10 G, uh, rather 10 gigabit Ethernet. Okay. Can only enjoy the the connectors, UTP connectors. So RJ45 connector, you will, the female one is the one that you find in your PC or in the device, right? And the male is the one that is usually connected to the cable. So normally, whenever you uh, hold the uh, the connector, okay, there is that release pin. Release pin here. You can see that. You press and then you can take it out. And when you plug in, it will make a click sound and then it will fix it there. So that release pin. Uh, so normally, what I do is I hold it in my left hand with the release pin down. Okay. So that way you can count it from the left to right. That's pin one, two, eight. So you hold it usually in your left hand and set the wires to the cable from your right hand, the pins down. Okay. 
So the order of the pins, uh, I guess it's given in the next slide. Now it says RJ45 is a keyed connector, meaning the connector can be inserted in one way or in only one way. And RJ means registered. Okay. Uh, while we are talking about this connector, remember this connector, you only plug it in, right? When it is crimped. When crimped, meaning when it's already uh, set it into the cable and the crimping tool, you press the pin. Yeah. Uh, did you did you did you do it last year? Yes. 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 Seven two two. You have to do it again. Yeah. So uh, if you just insert it to, without crimping it, then the pins are already up, right? They're not inserted so it will go and uh, damage your network card remember that so never ever uh, try to insert a NC or a new brand new connection into the uh, to the NIC without crimping it will damage those uh, pins All right uh, talking about this uh, I'll take you back to the other textbook here Okay. In a fast Ethernet environment, right? There is one more table which Okay, just this table here, which is uh, giving you both the standards, the same thing which is shown right here, but in a clear way. Now, if you look at the 568i standard, okay, so from the left to right, then those are the colors, uh, the color coding that you are going to use, right? So white, green, green, white, orange, uh, blue, and then white, blue, and then orange, and then white, brown, and then brown. Eh? And uh, if you are using the T568B standard, there are two standards, right? Then you have the other standard from there. Now, just to note here, that if you are using this table here that we have, and if you are using it in a fast Ethernet environment, fast Ethernet meaning up to 100 Mbps, right? Ethernet, Ethernet is uh, up to 10 MBPS, fast Ethernet is up to 100 MBPS. Okay. If you are using a table in a fast Ethernet environment, then only the two pairs are used. Two pairs. The two pairs are not used. Now TX and TX uh, plus and minus and RX, what they mean here? It says TX refers to transmit and RX refers to receive, right? So in this uh, fast ethernet environment, right? We will assume that only one pair is used for sending and the other one is for receiving, okay? Plus and minus is when you have been there, twisted together and uh, they give positive and negative uh, uh, 
values hai let's say voltages positive and negative voltages right so in a fast ether but in a gigabit uh, environment then uh, of course all of them are all the cables are being used okay so just keep in mind eh, if you are using fast ethernet then uh, you are only enjoying the only the two pairs of the cable are used eh? the two pairs are left unused eh? Okay, so it says here yeah, for gigabit, it's the uh, all four pairs are used for transmitting and receiving, and then uh, it's more efficient use of wire to help account for higher bandwidth or gigabit. Now, uh, for RJ45 uh, or rather the untwisted pair, there are two types of cables that you can make. One is the straight through, right? Straight through cables, remember, they are used in the environments where you have to connect a PC to the hub or a switch or a switch to a router um, or either way. Right? These, are, these are the places where you are going to use straight through. Remember, straight through cable is also known as the patch cable right and it is the most common cable right whenever you will connect a switch to a, a computer you are going to use straight through okay whenever you are going to connect the switch to the patch panel straight through right so in many cases it's the straight through but uh, there is also a chance that you may also need a uh, crossover right in case if you want to connect a pc to another pc switch to another switch or router to another router you will use the crossover crossover cables are made using the two different standards right one end you have five six eight a standard the other one the other end you have the five six eight b standard So this is the uh, another type of cable that you will normally uh, see is the rollover cable. Okay, rollover cable, or another word is console cable. Okay? The rollover cable is used for connecting the computer, or you can say the PC, to um, to a device such as. Uh, a router or a switch. Okay. Example of a rollover cable right here. Okay. One end is a RJ45 connector, the other end is a DB9 shape connector. Okay. And, uh, so that's a female connector. So in olden PCs, these pieces nowadays they don't have this connector. Uh, this guy used to be this connector, a uh, T-shaped rail connector. If the pins were there, nine pins like that. And it was normally written serial input output connector. Or Whenever new routers and switches were put in the uh, days, so of course you need to configure it. Eh? You need to give a host name, a name, or, or all those details, security, and other things have to be done. So this end of the table right, was connected to this interface on the desktop PC. And the other end <coughs> was connected to the console port of the particular device. Okay. So that's an example of a rollover or a console cable, right? And here it says it was uh, connected to the end 
that this is comfort and open terminal right? so using a software on the computer right you can get a connection to the device and then you can actually uh, configure the uh, details on the particular device okay? so this will say console port usually on the device it will say con con or sometimes it will say console port okay and this will be this is only available in switches which are manageable switches and in routers right which are manageable routers is one example of the console port rj45 right now in today's uh, pcs this type of uh, port are not present okay. so yeah this new pc they don't have this type of port. so how do you think they use or how the switches and router are connected nowadays now what happens uh, in today's environment uh, what people do is they get another cable which has got the mail port on the other end and the other side they have got a USB another cable so this mail will connect to the email right? for example here join the cable and then the other end goes into the USB ports, making work easier. Now we can connect through the USB port and put together out of the switch. Okay. The other end is same. The other end is RJ45, except the other end is changes to uh, USB. Okay, twisted pair applications it says uh, most common medium. Remember, twisted pair is of course the most common medium that you will find in today's networks and they're used in telephone network between house and local exchange, um, within buildings for PBX and for local area and networks. And the pros and the cons, twisted pair, of course. Uh, Okay. Low data rate, so and short distance. Okay. So pros, the first two are the pros, and the last two are the cons. Eh? Uh, then we have the coaxial cable. The coaxial cable is the cable that you normally see uh, connecting your TV to the antenna. Right, that's the coaxial cable. So you have a cover uh, or a outer covering that is the plastic uh, or normally yeah plastic you can say. Then there is an insulator and there is a outer conductor shield in between the two insulators and then the inner conductor which is the copper. So there is a single copper cable right and uh, there is no twisting there. So these coaxial cables were used in older networks, particularly in buzz networks. Um, it says coax cable carries signals of high frequency ranges than those in twisted pair because the two media are constructed quite differently. Eh? So the coax says they do carry high frequency ranges, right? And the outer conductor serves both as a shield against noise and uh, as second conductor, which complete the second. The categories of uh, coaxial cable, right? normally you will see the uh, RJ, RG59 uh, that is used for cable TV and RG58 for thin Ethernet and the RG11 for thick Ethernet. And uh, Cox cables are categorized by radio government rating RG, radio uh, government eh? RG, that's what it says. Each RG number denotes a unique set of physical specifications. 
Uh, no disease attenuation is much higher uh, in coastal than twisted pair. Although twisted, uh, although coastal cable run has a much higher bandwidth, the signal weakens rapidly and requires the frequent use of the repeater. A bit more on a uh, little bit on partial cable here. Okay, there is another one which is also there, which is the RG6. I think there is no RG6 here. Right, so this is the connector, this type of connector which actually connects to the TV, okay, known as the F connectors. Okay. Right, this one is one which connects to the pc okay so the computer used to have a uh, instead of this normal nick it used to have a, a different type of connector at the back so that this connector bnc bionet neil Councilman, okay uh, it's named after the two inventors these two people invented this connector This one will like plug in and then you twist it to lock it. But then again, you will hardly see uh, the personal cable being used in networking environment nowadays. Uh, it's always uh, the unshielded twisted pair or the twisted pair. Right? The applications of uh, coaxial cables. Uh, there is most versatile medium, television distribution, that is aerial TV or cable TV, long distance telephone transmission, can carry 10,000 calls, voice calls simultaneously, okay, but then it is replaced by fiber, uh, short distance computer system links and local area networks. The transmission characteristics of a coaxial cable. Uh, analog, it says amplifies every few kilometers, closer if higher frequency and up to 500 megahertz. Uh, remember 500 megahertz means 500 million hertz, that means 500 million cycles in one second, right? So sine wave. Eh? And if it is used for digital data transfer, then you need to have a uh, repeater every kilometer and uh, closer for higher data rates. All right, BNC connectors here. Fiber optic cable, it says relatively new transmission medium used by telephone companies in place of long distance trunk calls or trunk lines, and uh, also used by private companies in implementing local data communication networks, require a light source with injection, uh, laser diode, that is ILD or light emitting diode. Right? Um, just talking about that here. Okay, five optic. Eh? Um, it says uh, data okay, five optic cable or simply fiber contains one or several glass or plastic fibers at its center or core. Okay, 
one of several glass or plastic fibers. Data is transmitted through the central fibers via pulsing light typically sent from one of the two possible sources. Okay? So that means uh, the fiber or the glass or plastic fibers have the ability to transport light. Eh? So the light comes from two sources. One is the laser, the other one is the LED. Eh? So laser it says an intense focused light that can travel extremely long distances with very high data throughput. And the LED, a cool burning, long lasting technology used on shorter fiber optic connection such as between floors in buildings or between switch and a router. So just to know, okay, laser is for long distance, okay, and LEDs for uh, short distance. Okay? Laser and LED. Fiber optic lasers consist of three concentric sections and the plastic jacket, glass or plastic cladding, and the uh, fiber core. Now, uh, some people may show you a different picture, right? For example, this one here, this image that you see here, fiber optic cable. Now, it says uh, surrounding the fibers is a layer of glass or plastic called cladding. Okay. The cladding is less dense than the glass or plastic in the strands, and so reflects the light back in the or to the core in the, in patterns that vary depending on transmission mode. Okay. So surrounding the fiber, you have another thing. Okay, they call it the uh, cladding. Okay. And uh, cladding ensures that the when there is light transferring through the fiber, that the light does not go out of that fiber. Eh? That's what it says. Eh? The light reflects back eh? into the uh, into the core. And it says this reflection allows the fiber to bend around uh, corners without diminishing the integrity of the light based signal. So in case if the the copper is like sorry the fiber is like bent the cable is bent then because of that uh, cladding the light will not go straight because cladding will try to make it bend and eh? protect it and outside the cladding it says a plastic buffer protects the cladding and core so uh, and then because it says the buffer is opaque it also absorbs any light that might escape. Okay, so outside the cladding, there is a uh, buffer which also protects the light from escaping. And to prevent the uh, cable from stretching and to protect the inner core further, uh, strands of Kevlar, that is a polymeric fiber, surround the plastic buffer. Right? So outside the plastic buffer, there is another uh, thing known as the uh, Kevlar fiber or the poly polymeric fiber. And finally, it says a plastic sheet covers the strands of Kevlar. Figure, okay, this figure here says shows a fiber optic cable with multiple insulated fibers. The clear strands you see protruding from each line are not the actual cores. These are the visible plating around the core. Now, these little this steel kind of thing you see, the wire type of thing. It says this is not actually the fiber. This is the cladding. Okay, the core itself is microscopic in width. What does that mean? That means you will need a microscope to see that. Okay, so if you are seeing it with bare eyes, that means they are not the core. So the core is basically inside this cladding. Yeah? So very thin, actually. Yeah?
Another figure here, I want you to see this one actually. Because each strand of glass in the fiber optic transmits in one direction, right? So it says that each strand, right? One of these here, um, this transmits in one direction. Two strands are needed for full duplex communication. And uh, this is particularly when you are uh, using a fiber in a in, in your local area network, for example, switch to switch connection. Okay, so in that case, it says one solution is to use a zip cord cable, which in which two strands are combined side by side in a cone joint jacket, right? just like this here. And this is for relatively short distance, right? such as connecting a SEVA to a switch or a switch to a switch or maybe a router to a switch. Okay? One for sending, one for receiving. Okay? Only two cores here. The fiber types, Okay, the type indicated with the number given here, sliding the multi-mode and the single mode, right? Okay, talking about multi-mode and single mode here. Uh, five optical, it says, uses reflection to guide light through a channel. A glass of plastic core is surrounded by a cladding of less dense glass. So that's uh, how the uh, light travels. Now remember uh, one more thing here. Um, in a single mode fiber, okay, using the laser light, right, it travels in a, uh, in a straight, line eh? just like this here this is uh, for the single mode fiber that uses the laser light as the source eh? the multi-mode fiber okay can use either the laser or L the led and the light travels um, In a, using the pulses of, uh, I mean, the arrays. In, it can be the straight or it can be just in this format, a eh? zigzag kind of format at various angles. Eh? That's the multi mode type. Eh? So, this is an example of a multi mode fiber. Propagation modes, it says the under the mode you have this multi mode and single mode, and under the multi mode you have step index and the gradient index. Um, under the multi mode, it says uh, multiple beams of, of from a light source. Eh? So that's uh, here, multiple beams, right? From the light source. Uh, can further break down into uh, two forms. So the multi mode can be broken down into four, two forms that is, step index and the gradient index. The density of the uh, core remains constant from the center of the edges until it reaches the interface of the uh, core and the cladding. And uh, beams in the middle travel in straight lines through the core and reach the destination without reflecting. So it's talking about something like this. The one in the straight line goes straight. The other one goes like that, the zigzag pattern. Uh, under the graded index is the highest at the center of the core and decreases gradually at its lowest at the edge. Eh? So uh, the light beam okay, reduces its, its intensity.
distance covered here is just uh, up to about a thousand meters eh? with the graded index under the multi mode. Okay. Um, under this single mode, right, it says one beam of light and uses step index fiber and highly focused source of light that limits beam in to a small range of angles and all close to horizontal. Expensive because it is difficult to manufacture, but signal can be sent over many kilometers without spreading. Okay, so just for your, uh, I mean, knowledge here. So single mode can be used on for a long distance, remember? Okay, Multi-mode used in uh, environments where you have short distance. Okay, something on step index and graded index. And the single mode. Eh? Just want to see if uh, It's the same thing showing here. The fiber construction. So we have the outer jacket, the Kevlar, the plastic buffer, cladding, and the main core. Eh? This is attenuation is flatter than the case of UTP and Cox cable. We need PIVA that is actually 10 times less repeaters when we use PIVA. So attenuation is flat up, flat up means very close to zero, flat, eh? no attenuation at all in PIVA. The three types of uh, connectors that you will normally see in PIVA, the SC connectors, uh, subscriber channel used for TV cable, ST for uh, networking devices, okay, and the MTRJ. Uh, the MTRJ is the actually the most common one. It says here. Uh, the reason being, it uses two fibers and it's full duplex. Okay, and. Uh, the most common one eh? that is used in the multi mode. That means if you are using uh, it for connecting a switch to a switch or a switch to a router, eh? the MTRJ. Applications of fiber optic cable. Uh, used in cable TV network, uh, hybrid networks use a combination of fiber optic and coax cables. Right? So combination, uh, optical provides the backbone while the coaxial provides the connection to the user. Right? 
So Fiber usually provides the backbone for cable TV networks. Local area networks such as 100 base FX, uh, fast Ethernet, and 1000 base uh, X lens. Backbone networks use its uh, wide bandwidth as well. Eh? Advantages higher bandwidth, less uh, attenuation, immune to EMI, resistance to corrosive materials like glass is more resistant to corrosive material. Like you will hardly see a glass corroding, for example. Lightweight uh, is much lighter than copper, it says. Great uh, immunity to tapping. The copper cables create antenna effects and can easily be tapped. Eh? But uh, fiber cannot be tapped. It's more skewed, eh? in other words. Some disadvantages, say so installation and maintenance. It's a new technology. Installation and maintenance requires expertise. Uh, that is not yet available everywhere. Unidirectional light propagation, if we need bidirectional, two fibers are needed. And cost, the cable and the interfaces are more expensive than those of other guided media. If the demand for uh, BW bandwidth is, high, is not high, uh, often use of fiber optic is not justified. If you don't need higher bandwidth, then no need to use fiber. Right? But if you really need higher bandwidth, then probably you can opt for fiber. Right, then uh, talking about Ethernet cables here. And uh, inclusive of the fiber technology. Okay? So you will notice that uh, if you are just using uh, base TOT network, you will use UTP cables mostly or commercial cables. But if you are using uh, if, if you are using this FX uh, type network, then you will use multi mode. And the advantage itself is right here. You can see that uh, the the length that it covers, eh? 400 meters with the thousand base CX. So that's the shielded twisted pair. A thousand base SX uh, covering about uh, 275 to 550 meters and thousand base LX single mode covering 3 to 10 kilometers. Right. So that's a clear advantage of uh, fiber as compared to coastal and the unshielded twisted pair. Right, let's take a short break and then uh, we will continue with the unguided. Only few several slides left. Okay. Unguided media, or in other words, the wireless transmission. Eh? So, its transmission and reception are achieved by means of an antenna. Directional, that is, uh, transmitting antenna puts out focused beam. Uh, transmitter and receiver must be aligned. Uh, so there are it's talking about the different type of antenna here. So the directional antenna that means uh, must be aligned, right? Maybe pointing to each other. The omnidirectional antenna uh, signal spreads in out in all directions and can be received by many antennas. So usually. Uh, the wireless signals are uh, put in omnidirectional. If you have a wireless access point, for example, then you will, or maybe a wireless router, uh, it will have that omnidirectional type of antenna. The signal will spread in a radius form, okay? Uh, but if you have like uh, uh, a satellite dish type of uh, thing where you have to probably put it in a in a specific direction. Eh? So that is an example of a directional uh, antenna there. Um, further to that, unguided media. So there are three types, as we have mentioned before, the radio. So it says wireless transmission of electrical waves includes AM and FM radio bands. Microwaves also a form of radio transmission. 
uh, IMFM, we all know amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. The second type uh, here is the infrared. It says invisible light waves whose frequency is below that of a, of a red light and uh, requires line of sight okay? and are generally subject to interference from heavy rain used in remote control units, example TV. Eh? So TV in your remote, so that's using infrared, right? And if something uh, comes in the middle, then of course the signal will be uh, obstructed. Eh? Microwave says uh, high frequency. Okay? Um, so compared to infrared, uh, it's a low frequency. That means uh, uh, when we talk about frequency, we're talking about the signal, eh? the sine wave. So low frequency, that means maybe, uh, maybe 10 complete cycles in one second. But when it compares to microwave, it says high frequency. That means maybe 100 cycles in one second, right? So that uh, makes it like more data uh, to be transported in the same amount of time, eh? uh, With extremely short wavelength, one centimeter to one meter, uh, often used for long distance and terrestrial transmission and cellular phones, telephones, requires line of sight. Eh? Um, can have a look at this uh, microwave thing. examples here so you can see that uh, they're mostly in in a certain direction okay. a line of sight Example here, this one. You'll find this uh, some like usually on, on the in the high hilly areas, eh? especially on the mountains. Eh? These types of uh, antennas, microwave and type of antennas. Eh? Okay, wireless examples: terrestrial microwave, satellite microwave, broadcast radio, and infrared. Terrestrial microwave is used for long distance telephone service, uses radio frequency spectrum from 2 to 40 gigahertz. Okay, so frequency is quite high, right? Parabolic dish transmitter mounted high, right? So parabolic, the round one, and uh, used by common carriers as well as private networks. Requires unobstructed line of sight between source and receiver. And uh, curvature of the air requires stations, repeaters at least 30 miles apart. Eh? Can do a little search on this as well, just to see. Just an example here. The applications of terrestrial uh, microwave uh, is television distribution, long distance telephone transmission and private business uh, networks. Eh? Microwave transmission, uh, talking about disadvantages here. 
uh, there's a line of sight requirement. So for microwave, you need to have that line of sight requirement. Uh, expensive towers and repeaters and subject to interference such as passing of uh, airplanes and rain. Eh? Satellite microwave transmission is a microwave relay station in space. Okay, so this is uh, in space. It's hanging up there in the orbit and uh, certain countries they have their own satellites okay, for tracking weather and, and many more uh, communications and other things. So microwave relay station in space can relay signals over long distances, geostationary satellites, they remain above the equator at a height of 22,300 uh, miles and travel around the Earth in exactly the same time the Earth takes to rotate. Eh? The links, it says the satellite transmission links, Earth stations communicate by sending signals to the satellite on an uplink. Eh? Just an example like this here. Earth stations, they communicate. and. Uh, the satellite then repeats those signals to on a downlink, right? So picking up from one place and then sending it a different place. Eh? Just like we view, for example, the games on TV, eh? happening in Japan or in you know, Hong Kong or in US. And so they are being transmitted through the satellite links. Eh? The, broad, the broadcast nature of the downlink makes it attractive for services such as distribution of television programming. Eh? the process, okay, the uplink and then the downlink. Okay. The applications of uh, satellite uh, transmissions is, uh, is television distribution, right? And then long distance telephone uh, transmission, okay. and mm -hmm. also the private business user. Fiber versus satellite here. This is a comparison of fiber, uh, optical fiber and satellite transmission. Uh, bandwidth, this says the theoretical limit of one terahertz. Uh, but for a satellite, it's about 36 to 72 megahertz, that is million uh, hertz. And this is in billion hertz. Eh? So that means fiber is uh, much more better when compared to bandwidth, but then um, we cannot lay cables everywhere. Eh? So that's where the satellite comes into. Uh, interference, immune to EMI, okay, fiber, uh, but for satellite, it's a subject to interference from various sources, including microwave. Uh, security, in terms of security, difficult to tap. Uh, for satellite, it says signals must be encrypted for security. Multipoint capability, primarily it says a point-to-point -point medium. Fiber is a point-to-point, -point, uh, whereas satellite, it is a point-to-multipoint. Flexibility, it says difficult to reconfigure to meet changing demand. And compared to satellite, it says easy to reconfigure. And uh, connectivity, to customer site, there's a local loop required. Local loop is basically a telephone exchange, eh? an exchange office or exchange center. Uh, whereas uh, for satellites is with antenna, it's all on customer premises, local loop is not required. All right. So we have talked about microwave and then we've talked about satellite. And the third one here is the uh, radio. Okay, radio says is omnidirectional, and uh, microwave is directional. Okay. So microwave, uh, you have to put it in a in a direction, right? The receiver and the uh, the sender must be pointing to each other. 
whereas radio is omnidirectional it just uh, goes in all directions eh? radio is a general term often used to encompass frequencies in the range of 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz eh? so 3 kilohertz that is 3000 hertz to 300 Um, billion hertz. Eh? Mobile telephony occupies several frequency bands, just under one gigahertz. Eh? Even the radio channels that we that run in uh, Fiji, eh? like FM ninety six or uh, Radio Fiji two, whatever, they operate on a certain frequency. Eh? So those. Uh, those organizations which are running um, using radio frequency they have to obtain a license from the fijian government uh, to run on a particular channel otherwise if anyone starts come starts with any channel then of course there will be interference eh? so there is a unit called audio visual unit i think under ministry of information they are the ones looking after this So if anyone, even if anyone wants to use RT services, radio telephone services, like uh, companies like uh, maybe Fiji Water, they have those RT services in their big trucks. Okay, the radio telephone, right? Okie dokie type thing, right? Yeah. So they also need to uh, get a license to operate on a certain frequency. properties of radio radio waves are frequency dependent right so low frequency says uh, low frequency that means uh, less number of cycles in a time frame right uh, pass through radio waves pass through obstacles well and power of signals fall off sharply over distance so if you if they are running with low frequencies then of course uh, the power is going to fall off over distance eh? uh, with higher frequencies radio waves tend to travel in uh, straight lines higher frequencies that means more cycles in one second eh? that means more heavy signal so they will bounce off obstacles and absorbed by rain and uh, at all frequencies is subject to interference from electrical equipment interference between users and therefore highly regulated regulated means again you have to obtain a license right infrared uh, short range communication vcr remotes cheap uh, do not pass through solid objects will not interfere with uh, a similar system in a adjacent room okay. so better security against this drops I'm talking about microwave here yeah, in summary it says uh, requires line of sight signals propagate in one direction at a time two frequencies are required for two way communication for a telephone conversation it says we need one frequency for transmitting and another for receiving it yeah? and uh, Own transmitter for each frequency. Both are combined as a single piece for transceiver. To increase distance, say, we say repeaters are required, and say signal received by one antenna is converted back into transceiver form and relayed to the next antenna. An example of a terrestrial microwave here. Right, satellites. Same as the terrestrial microwave, it says with a satellite acting as a super tall antenna and repeater. Geosynchronous satellites. It says line of sight propagation requires sending and receiving antennas. Uh, be locked onto each other's location at all times. 
So the antennas which are on air must always point okay, to the satellite in the orbit. And to ensure a constant communication, satellite must move at the same speed as the Earth so that it seems uh, it is fixed. Because you know, we know that Earth rotates. Eh? So satellite must also kind of rotate in that because the antennas on the Earth, if they rotate and if the satellite is not rotating together, then the satellite will be pointing somewhere else. Eh? So the satellite also has to rotate in the same way the air rotates so that the antennas on the air the micro dishes always point to the satellite in that direction eh? otherwise the direction of the antennas will be somewhere else and the satellite will be po uh, pointing somewhere else if the satellite does not rotate okay so the satellite must rotate at the same uh, speed eh? And he says this satellite is called, so the one that rotates is there called it the geosynchronous satellite. Transmission from the air to the satellite is called uplink and the transmission from the satellite to the air is called the downlink. Okay, so geosynchronous satellite here. That means they kind of rotate as according to the air. And the other example showing the, so they are situated somewhere around 22,000 miles above the Earth. <clears throat> so how is uh, the satellite fixed onto the orbit? Like how does it stay there? Why does it, it doesn't fall? Any idea? It's, it's uh, just above the what? Where there is no oxygen or something? Those people who... They call it the orbit? So there is no gravity there. Hmm? Looks like it. Eh? No gravity. If there was gravity, then of course it will fall on the earth. So it's uh, it's uh, they call it that place. They call it the orbit, eh? And uh, so there is uh, <clears throat> no properties which kind of or a property to make it stagnant there or rather stay there. Right. So of course the satellite must be made in using some such materials that it is uh, it has the ability to survive. And those people who uh, sometimes they go in this what do you call satellite and they go and walk there, they usually take their Oxygen and everything. Eh? Okay, talking about cellular technology or telephony here. Uh, it says provides communications, connections between two moving devices or between one mobile unit and one LAN unit. And it says service is divided into small regions called cells. Each cell contains an antenna is controlled by a small office called cell office. And each cell office is controlled by a switching office called MTSO, mobile telephony, telephone switching office. Typical radius of a cell is one to 12 miles and the uh, transmission power of each cell is kept low to prevent its signal from interfering with those of other cells. Um, so I think uh, the next picture will show you an example of this cellular system, the mobile phones that we use nowadays, right? Um, another word they call is the base station, right? Base station. 
So each uh, the antenna in each environment, right? So as you move from one place to another, you get connected to a different base or different cell. Eh? For example, from here, if you're traveling to Nandi, then of course there are many different cells you'll find along the way. And uh, as you move, you get connected to a different cell. Eh? So it says during the call, the mobile phone may move from one cell to another, then the signal becomes weak. Okay. To solve the problem, the MTSO monitors the level of the signal every few seconds. Right. So your signal level in your phone, right? If it gets very like, for example, towards the edge of one particular cell, then of course, uh, the other cell will get you get you the signal. Eh? Sometimes you are in a situation where you have no signal. Eh? So when you move around, then you get the signal. So maybe when you are moving, you are getting close to a particular cell or you are getting connectivity from that particular antenna. Eh? And it says if the strength of the signal diminishes, the MTSO seeks a new cell that can accommodate the communication better than change the channel carrying the phone. Right? So, uh, in other words, like we have already experienced this. Right? When you move around with your phone, basically you get different signals. Right? Uh, so that's how you get. That's how. That's basically you are getting connected to different cells at different time and a different location eh? all right so that's uh, more about the unguided right and uh, talked about the three different uh, forms of unguided communication that is radio wave microwave and infrared eh? Okay, um, on this topic, there is uh, no calculation in this case here, yeah, no calculation. So straight or direct uh, type of questions are likely to appear. Okay, maybe to write the applications of maybe one of these types of uh, cables or the media, okay, or maybe uh, briefly discussing the advantage of one type of media or disadvantage, right? Those types of uh, straightforward direct questions uh, can come from this topic, okay? All right, any question on this one so far? All right, there are a few uh, tutorial questions for this topic. So please try to attempt. Okay, these uh, questions are based uh, on the, the textbook. I think this is uh, chapter seven looks like. Transmission media, chapter seven. Um, yeah, it's coming from chapter seven. What? 